Last time on Waterdeep Dragon Heist, the adventures met in the City of the Dead and fought a troll from Undermount at the Yawning Portal. And now, for this week's adventure. While being thanked and congratulated by the owner Durnan and the other patrons of the tavern, Remy, the red-skinned tiefling rogue, disappeared for a while. As the attention towards the adventure is lessened, Remy comes back with four mugs of ale and some extra coin in his purse. I couldn't let the coin go to someone else, see? He says of the dead bandits they killed earlier. As Remy settles in with the others, a man with a thick, twisted mustachio and a floppy hat approaches them at the table. A Volo Thamp Gedrum, chronicler, wizard, and celebrity, at your service. I trust you've noted the violence in our fair city these past ten days. I haven't seen so much blood since my last visit to Baldur's Gate. But now I fear I have misplaced a friend amid this odious malevolence. My friend's name is Floon Blagmar. He's got more beauty than brains, I'm afraid, and I worry that he took a bad way home a couple of nights ago and got kidnapped. Or worse. If you could agree to track him down with all due haste, I could offer you ten dragons apiece now, and I can give you each ten times that when you find dear Floon. May I prevail upon you in my hour of need? After a few probing questions, the adventurers decide to take the job even if they are a little unsure of Volo's ability to pay up. The upfront 40 gold is very attractive to the group. Kazan, the human fighter, says that this money could help a lot of people. And Sungail, who has no interest in money, says, The real reward is the help we provide. Though Remy and Thiessen seem to have need of it. Thiessen even says, These clockwork techniques are not cheap, you know. I could use this gold to pay back my guild. And I'm in quite a lot of debt as it is. Then the group decides that tomorrow morning they would get together and they would look for Floon Blagmar, as it is already late. Sungail, Thiessen, and Remy all meet back at the Yawning Portal in the morning for breakfast, and while they eat, a group of adventurers enter the tavern, and they pay Durnan five gold each to be lowered into Undermount. Durnan says to them as they are lowered, Be careful down there, and come back safely. It's double to come back up. After breakfast, the three meet up with Kaz and the fighter, and they head towards the last place that Floon was seen, a bar called the Skewer Dragon. But as they turn a corner, they find themselves on a street that's been corned off by the City Watch. Lying on the cobblestones are a half dozen corpses, seemingly the victims of some terrible skirmish. The Watch officers have disarmed and arrested the three blood-drenched humans that are in the midst of being questioned as witnesses. One of the officers see them pass by, and he says, Get on, will ya? Nothing to see here. As the heroes pass, Sungail eavesdrops on two of the city watch, and he hears that not only did they find this scene this morning, but they also found Krentz, that Xanathar thug from the night before, washed up in the sewers, dead. Familiar with the city streets, Remy takes them around the crime scene, and back on track towards the tavern in question. Tall, densely packed tenements leave most of the neighborhood in shadow at ground level. Most of the street lamps have had their glass smashed and their candles stolen, and the smell of salt air and excrement lingers as they pass by rows of run-down buildings. One nearby shop stands out from the others. It has a deep purple facade, and in its window hangs a stuffed beholder. Above the door hangs a sign whose elaborate letters spell out, Old Zoblog Shop. Sungail the Druid and Remy the Rogue enter the shop and find a frazzled deep gnome behind the counter. Speaking erratically, the gnome welcomes them to his shop. Hail, well met! Come browse the shelves of the most curious curiosity shop in the world! Was uh, that a question, Dare? asks Remy. Zoblog gives a confusing sound. Uh -huh. That may have been a yes, or maybe not. Sungail asks, Where did you get the beholder in the window? And the gnome replies, Oh, it came with the shop. Uh, see, when I bought it, I had planned on naming the shop after myself. <laughs> but there was quite a lot of backlash over that, and people stopped coming. So, uh, instead of naming the shop after myself, the shop named me. <laughs> so now I'm Zoblog. <laughs> Singale buys a dead sprite in a bottle, and he tells it he'll find a suitable resting place for it. 
Remy finds a diary with some pages missing and a pair of bone knuckle dice. He also asks if Zomblog saw anything the night Floon went missing, and he slides them two gold pieces. Oh yeah, I remember him. He was with a pretty young boy, and when the two of them got jumped by some Zentarum thugs, yeah, they were wearing black, and I think one of them had a, a wing serpent tattoo. The two adventurers thank the weird gnome for his time, and they leave the shop. And as they're leaving, he says, Thanks! Don't ever come back again! And then he slams the door behind them and locks several locks. The skewered dragon looks like a ruin. Both of its front-facing windows are smashed, and a ship's anchor is lodged in the roof. Through the windows, the adventurers can see a group of haggard patrons drinking from huge tankards. Kazan enters the tavern and heads to the main table. He grabs a mug and fills himself a mug of ale. The dock workers, who were sharing a tankard for breakfast, turn to stop him, but see Kazan's intimidating figure and sit back down. Kazan drops a silver into the money pot and pays for his mug of ale. There was a man here two nights ago named Floon Blagmar. He's gone missing. Did any of you see him or Volo a few nights ago? A man at the table pipes up and says, Yeah, I saw him. Volo won a bunch of money playing cards. He left before I could win it back. A young kid named Raynar joined Floon after Volo left. These was drunk and when they left here. He looks around to see if anyone's paying attention, then lowers his voice. He's followed by a group of men dressed in black. They all hang out at Candle Lane. Regardless of the daylight, gloom envelops a narrow alley as dark as a dungeon, and as odorous as one too. Nearly all the street lamps have been smashed. The only light that pierces the darkness is a faint flickering from down the lane a distant candle. Remy steps forward towards a fence around the building. The gate's locked, but not for long. Remy looks behind him, gives the party a wink, and unlocks it. He then darts forward, inspects the front door, notices that there's a second door, not far away. He checks it out too, motions to the group that he hears noises behind the second door, and then he waves them over to the first. Once there, the tiefling rogue checks the door for traps, satisfied that there are none. He unlocks the door and quietly opens it for Kazan, who is beyond ready. Kazan enters and can't identify any immediate enemies, so he moves aside and he lets the others in. Very quickly and quietly, Remy moves across the room and hides behind some crates. He can hear noises on the other side, and with intense eye contact with Kazan, he motions in that direction. Kazan nods and ushers Sungail and Thiessen inside. Whoever is inside with them mustn't have heard Thiessen's clockwork noises, or they'd have been ambushed already. Thiessen prays to Gon, the god of knowledge and invention, to bless his friends for the upcoming fight. They instantly feel more focused and ready. Remy attacks first. He peeks around the corner of a large crate and he sees two bird-like creatures known as Kenku. Without overthinking it, he sneaks out and takes the first one out, immediately. Quite easy when the enemy doesn't see you coming. Kazan steps to one of these Kenku and plunges both of his war picks into the bird creature. Before long, the party have killed three and taken one of the Xanathar's agents captive. The remaining Kenku tell the group that Floon was taken in the sewers, and that the pretty boy, well, he's in the back room. The adventurers check said back room and find a young noble named Raynar Neverrember, son of the former open lord of Waterdeep, Gadult Neverrember. <clears throat> this is all my fault. They took him because they thought he was me. Father's treasure is. Oh man. He would never have told me. Never had time for me. Barely even smoke. 
Remy looks up upon the boy intensely and says, I believe him, I... Raynor further explains, Xanathar got this stone of lure. It's an artifact or something. He thought that it would lead him to my father's treasure. The artifact, I guess, was stolen from right under his eye. He's been hunting it like a mad dog ever since. What about the Zentrum? Asks Chasm, the human fighter. Yeah, they're looking for it as well. Truthfully, I... I think everyone is looking for it. I'm surprised I haven't been kidnapped before. My thanks to you for finding me, by the way. The adventurers search the building, and find some art and silver bars in a secret room. And they find five blank pages of paper that signal as magical. Thiessen says, Huh, I'll identify these later. As the group grab their loot, the city watch make themselves known at the front of the house. Sungale, Remy, and Thiessen sneak out the back door while Kazan and Raynar deal with the city watch. Using his station as a never member, Raynar is able to quell a full investigation of what happened with this warehouse. The group meet back up and try to decide where to stash the loot before they continue their search for Floon. Thank you for joining us on Heroes of Presents Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Hey there, this is Sean. The video you just watched, I, uh, I did over the course of a couple weeks. Um, this little message at the end of the video here is just to tell you that um, I did some extensive research trying to find out all the artists of all the different um, images I used, and um, it was a clusterfuck of uh, different um, uh, links to links to links. I did find a, a bunch of them, like I found um, Mark S. Cookman and Leo Amaral and uh, Andrew Krivulia and uh, Siddharth uh, Kachuvetti, uh, Jong Him An, um, so a bunch of different artists, but I found most of them, I would say 85% of the images I found uh, were being used on um, were being used on different websites by different people who weren't crediting the artists either. Um, so it was very, very hard for me to find it. Um, I, um, I understand that uh, copyright and stuff, but uh, this is just silly stuff that I'm doing on the side anyways. Hopefully no one takes offense to it or uh, is pissed off that I didn't uh, write their names or credit their artistry. All the images I used were beautiful and I really appreciate the uh, the art of it. If things were a little cataloged better on the internet, I would totally give credit, um, so my apologies for that. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, we'll uh, hopefully be putting out another one.